I have a Smurfs record as well, I must admit. So, I don't know if you can get that. That takes me back to my childhood as well. My name is Mark Rayner. I moved to Nottingham 1992. Um, I've had an out of control record habit for all of that time and more. <coughs> um, I'm just, yeah, here I am. <laughs> still, <laughs> still buying records, still playing records, still involved in music in Nottingham after 30 years of being here. I currently play records under the name of Mighty Clouds of Harmony. That was a name, I, it's a, a show I started on City Beat Radio that was started by Nick, Nick Strang. Um, before that, I, uh, I was co-editor of a fanzine called Wild Honey, and we did little parties. Um, but that's all in, in the past now, just, yeah, just concentrated on my mighty clouds of harmony. Got a show, radio show on um, My House, Your House. The odd little guest slot here and there. And some work with Running Circle Records, uh, with Goan and Tom, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
and the, <laughs> and they're not quite what you were looking for. So. Um, over the years, Langley Mill has been good, good to me. There's been, been some good, good collections that they've got in that I've managed to buy quite a few from. Quite cheap as well, at, at one point. But the prices, the prices for everything have been going up a lot. You know, what was a twenty pound record a couple of years ago is now a fifty pound record. I'm sure we've all experienced, you know, the shocking, the rise in prices, not just cost of living, but, but vinyl, I think it's become quite fashionable in recent years, which is great, you know, it's great that there's a, a new generation coming in behind the CD buyers and the streamers. I think a lot of people want to get back to having a physical thing in their hand, having, you know, it's nice, nice to have a collection on, you know, on your shelves in your living room. You can't really display all the stuff that you're streaming, can you? <clears throat> so, but Nassim has been a bit weird place recently. There's tends to be a, there's only like rough trade. Rough trade doesn't really service certainly not my needs. Second hand shops have been good over the years. There's obviously been plates. There's been Funky Monkey was a good shop. Um, there's arcade records. There's um, there's now running circle records down in the um, Stenton Market, which is good. You're going to have to define worse then. What's the... Um... Uh, your least favourite. Oh, my least favourite. Well, do you know what? Right, over the years, I've managed to... I've managed to kind of thin it down because it's a living, breathing thing and I'm running out of space on the shelves. Um, every so often I go through the shelves and I pull things off that either I've fallen out of love with or I've not played for the longest time. But I do... And this is, this is not set up, by the way. This is purely by coincidence. I have, I have some records on my shelves. It's a bit of a time capsule for me. So this is the, fir this is the first seven inch that I ever bought with my own pocket money. This is a bona fide. This is, this is, this is a fact. So this is, I bought this in 1979 with pocket money and I bought it in Woolworths in Stockport, Mersey Way. And it's the Boomtown Rats. And uh, it's, it's a track called Rat Trap, so it might not be everybody's musical taste. I don't think I can listen to it anymore. Are you getting that? Yeah. Yeah? So it's, yeah. Maybe that's, yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily a great bit of music, but it has, it has some sort of emotional attachment for me. That's the beginning of my journey. <clears throat> and uh, I have a Smurfs record as well, I must admit. So I don't know if you can get that. That takes me back to my childhood as well. So again, it, perhaps it's not the best record. It might be one of the worst records I've got. I don't play them very often. But every once in a while, it's a bit, it's a bit of a trip down memory lane. I don't know, some records so unimaginative. <laughs> They're really, yeah. Just from my own point of view, having to do press shots and stuff, it's difficult. You don't want to come over too contrived. You don't want to, but you don't want it to be that, you know, uh, you don't want it to be boring. You don't want to fade into the background. Um, yeah, examples of either would be fine, actually. If you've got, like, ones that are really... I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, this, this someone always sticks out. I mean, it's it's it's, n it's nothing particularly special, but is that? I mean, uh, with it just being so sponta spontaneous, I you know, I could have I could have probably gone and and dug out and dug out something quite interesting ahead of the ahead of the thing. I tell you what, I do like at the moment. I am liking the stuff on Running Circle now. I know the fr I know the friends of mine, but I I am really impressed with the fact that we have a a new ish young label that's based in Nottingham, and they're really making an effort to make their product special. Um, 
takes, you know, it takes quite a commitment because I know making records, especially nowadays, is really quite expensive. So the fact that Tom and Gohan are really putting their money, you know, with, you know, put, you know, really invest in putting themselves out there. I've got a lot of, a lot of time for that kind of thing. Oh, look, Nick, there's that Sue Barker record I bought off you that I've still not paid for yet. This is a particularly special record. If you like, it, Italo, cocaine-fueled Italo music, high camp, then this is the record for you. Somebody else I'm really liking. This is placebo, not the placebo band from the 90s, but this is a European jazz, I think Belgium, I think, a guy called Mark Moulin. This stuff, before it got reissued, these were like 500 pound records, so. Not that the value should have anything to do with it, but I think before, before, the, before the, the age of reissues, they were impossible to find. Let's see what else. I'll tell you who I do like. This is quite nicely. So this is an Italian band called Mop Mop. I've done some truly amazing, deep, percussive. It's a mixture of like, like deep house, but with live instrumentation, um, marimbas and things like that and what have you. So yeah, great. Italians based in Germany, I believe. Oh man. You should have come around for the weekend, Nick. We need, we need quite a lot, a lot of time for this. Okay. What else have we got? I've got Russian, Russian jazz. The sleeve's not that good, but the music in this is ridiculous. Russian jazz music. So I don't know from, I don't know when it's from. It's quite old. It's, all right. it's not going to tell me because it's going to be in Russian, isn't it? Such an idiot. But um, kind of makes me wonder how some of these people from like Eastern Bloc countries that were kind of um, kind of quite controlled in terms of the media and, and, and from a creative point of view, how music got in and out of these countries. I think there's been a long history of artists smuggling records, films, books in and out of countries over the years. This is probably just one more example of it, but absolutely, absolutely sick jazz record. Up here I've got Prelude, West End, Sal Soul, um, some stuff. Uh, Noid, Noid Records, Itchy Boys label. Um, and then I've got like a load of Philly international stuff. So that's, that's that section. Here I've got Disco Boogie, more Disco Boogie, more Disco and Boogie records. In fact, pretty much all of that is that. All my, all my soul is packed away in boxes. Um, like bits of, uh, I've got a cube down there with Japanese music, or like Japanese soul, disco boogie, rock records. Um, I've got a section down there that's electronic music, new and old, so kind of contemporary electronic, and like classic 70s and 80s experimental electronic music. Um, what else? A couple of, bo couple of boxes of sevens down there. Real mixture of stuff. So I'd say a lot of what I play is kind of quite on a on a tripped out soul disco kind of kind of feel. One of the pivotal one of the pivotal moments for me was back in the nineties. Um, me and three friends got in a car, went down to Brighton for the weekend. We went to uh, an illegal warehouse party thrown by some friends of ours, and in the car on the way down there. Um, this friend of ours um, had this tape on the Grand Disco music um, put together by a guy called Chalky. 
never heard of him never never heard of him before or since but this music kind of changed my life really um now this friend of mine who was driving the car he wouldn't tell us he wouldn't tell us what the records were called he was kind of quite careful with, in that respect but it kind of kind of lit a, lit a fire underneath me and a few friends and that's kind of where our our love of like disco and underground underground music from the 70s and 80s really took off and so we would buy the loot, the, the old newspapers, the loot magazines that came out twice a week. And we'd get that in the evening post and we'd scour the adverts. And then we'd phone up and go around and look, for, look through boxes of records. And I think all these people wanted to sell the whole box of records. They wanted to get rid of it. But we were just like cherry picking the bits that we wanted. But we would find like, we'd find like things that are selling now between 50, anywhere between 50 and 100 pounds or whatever more. We, we were finding these records for a pound and 50p. So, so kind of what you see on the shelves now, I've, I've managed to, manage, I've been very lucky in uh, being able to buy it all for not very much money, to be honest, over the years. This is, a, for me, a particularly important record. Um, I was in, a, I was in a, some little club in Stockport in the late 80s and the DJ played this and I asked him what it was. And um, above the music, he shouted that it was James Ingram. So I spent the next 10 years looking for a James Ingram record. I didn't know what the title was. Um, I bought so many James Ingram records and got them home and been disappointed because it's not the one. And it's just buried, it's buried on, the, on the B side. Yeah, it's just a yeah, remix that never made it to the, to the 12 inch or the album. So that's what, I've, that's what I've got for two quid from Langley Mill. It's got the Frankie Knuckles reprise, but I've also, also got another copy as well. But um, yeah, two quid, man. That's, that's the kind of price I want to be paying for my records. Let's have a look. In fact, I kind of know what it is. I don't know if I can find it. If I, if I can find it. Yeah, let's have a look. So it's the thing. So here it is. Look. This I think this probably hands down my favourite disco record. So this is a track called um, "Can't Play Around" by Lace. It's a Larry Levan remix. But seriously, it's um, and I don't think it's a terribly expensive record neither. But there has this has to be. Um, yeah, this would be like in the top five of my desert island records to, to get marooned with if, if, I, if I had to be pushed. <laughs> but it's hard. I mean, I don't know about you, but it kind of changes day to day with your mood sometimes. Sometimes I don't want to hear it. <laughs> sometimes I just don't want to hear another disco record. So there's a few, there's a few, bits, on the, there's a few bits on the Prelude label which kind of I really quite like. This is one of... Uh, I don't know if you can focus on that. Yeah, I think so. So that's something that's kind of quite hard to find nowadays. Uh, the Michael Wilson, Francois Kevorkian. A lot of, a lot of mixes on, on a Prelude and West End that Francois did uh, really, yeah, have been a big influence on me. Um, yeah, some of, some of the West End stuff that I managed to find, like, Quite a few years ago, some some of these things, so West End promos. Some are picked up in on trips to the states and stuff. Um, this is when they were still in dollar bins, so you can find you can find classic records for a dollar or thereabouts. So I've had a lot of this for a long time now. So I found Rob's Rob's has been a good shop. We used to haggle, we used to haggle with Rob for records. For like over 25p, 50p, 50p. And it's hard to believe now. You got a best Rob's find somewhere. Oh, 
best Rob's find. I'd be hard pushed to find it now. There's a Joe, Joe Batan album that I found for 25p. Um, uh, un, untold classic disco records. I'm just trying to think what else I might have. It's hard, really. It's all, it's all a bit, yeah, it's a bit random. I like, um, I don't like to be too organised because I like the chaos that comes with not being organised. So I'll probably not find the record I'm looking for, but I might find five others, five others that I've, um, I've not played for ages. That so it's kind of it's it's, it's nice in that, in that respect. It throws up a whole bunch of. Oh, I tell you, wait there a second. I'll go and grab something. This bootleg came out. It was only very, very limited copies, and uh, yeah, a friend of mine managed to get me this. This has been. This is quite a pivotal point in my music uh, buying career. Kind of opened the doors to a whole new side of music, especially from New York in that period in the, in the 70, late 70s, early 80s, um, with this kind of alternative post-punk post sound, if you, I suppose, if you like. Obviously, over the years, I've, I've gone out an awful lot, gone a lot of clubbing, I've met an awful lot of people, and I've met lo lots of great DJs and producers. I used to go to DIY nights a lot, which I really loved. Um, in terms of producers, I don't know, the Nottingham Deep House scene has not really been my thing over the years. I, I don't get me wrong, I love house music, but um, it seems to have had a bit of a stranglehold on the creativity in Nottingham. A lot of people focused on Deep House, and I, you know, my tastes are a lot broader than, than just that. So I've um, tend to look outside of Nottingham for inspiration like um, there's a guy called Hugh Costin and he's got a band called Torn Sale I've done some remix work for him recently I really like Hugh's stuff a mixture of folk and Americana and um, yeah with a bit of a melancholy kind of twist to it it's quite it's quite beautiful Hugh's, Hugh's music uh, it's quite often introspective um, in terms of who's who's making good new music um, like electronic music, I don't really know. I kind of, I'm aware that these people exist, but I tend to live in a, in a bit of a bubble. It's taken a number of years and a lot of saving money to 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 get to get these bits of equipment. Um, I suppose it it started with my mixer. Really, um, a friend of mine put put me in touch with a guy in. Los Angeles. He was selling this mixer because he needed to pay for an operation for his dog. It is, it is the bottom line. So he had to sell his mixer. Up. So I paid £1,200 for that. And then that arrived via UPS. It didn't work properly. So another friend of mine put me in touch with this guy called Justin, who was responsible for um, maintaining Fabric sound system. So I got that repaired by him. So after the repairs, the mixer stood me at fifteen hundred pound, and then I, <coughs> then I wanted some good speakers to, to put in my living room. So I bought these Tannoy speakers. I drove to Cardiff for those, put them in the back of my car, and brought them back. So I don't even want to see these, but yeah. So just to give you an idea of the scale. Just as a record there, to, just just to compare. So they kind of they kick out. They, yeah, it's qu quite a quite a lot of sound comes out of them. They're not exactly not exactly girlfriend friendly speakers. So, but they needed repairing. So I took those to London, got those repaired. It's kind of a, a long history of buying equipment that doesn't work and and paying for it to be fixed, basically. And then I think the last thing that I got got from my living room was the amplifier. So this was this was listed on eBay for the wrong price. The guy didn't know what it was. Um, a guy in London, um, he him and his friend used to work in banking, 
and um, they shared an apart apartment together. And uh, this guy's friend left this amplifier in the bottom of a wardrobe when he moved back to Switzerland. So this guy wanted to sell it, get rid of it, needed the space. So I got it for a, a song, basically. Got paid £1,000 for it from Mark Levinson, which is unheard of because it's like £10,000 amplifier. Deep question, it works on so many levels. It provides a bit of an escape for me from, I suppose, the humdrum of everyday life, going to work, rush hour traffic, going to the supermarket, all that business. It's, it's an escape. It's, um, for me, you can travel to a different, a different country, a different world, a different time, just by putting a record on. I love the smell. I love the smell of it. Dusty old, dusty old records, smelly old record sleeves. Um, I love that. Um, the range of emotions that it can that it can uh, evoke is uh, is is amazing. You know, nice jazz record on a Sunday morning with the, with a cup of coffee and your breakfast. You can't beat it. Um, but also, like this, like I said, probably said before, the social side of things. I love to share. You know. In an environment with my, with my friends, and we're kind of you, you share things with, with people, and you get you get shown like a different a different way of being or a different way of thinking that, you, that never occurred to you before. is is quite yeah, it's exciting, empowering. It's um, I don't know why else why else with records. So there's a downside to records as well, and they're heavy, they take up a lot of room, they cost a lot of money. Um, but it's yeah, it's kind of all I know. It's kind of a, I grew up grew up with records. I didn't inherit I didn't inherit a good record collection from my family. My mum and dad listened to the Carpenters and ABBA, which I suppose in itself is good music. But there wasn't a there wasn't a big variety. There wasn't I've not kind of come away from my childhood with these goals in mind. This is a lot of this has just evolved from meeting some pretty interesting. Um, people uh, in my life. <laughs>